This is KGW News at 11. Well, let's take a quick look outside of downtown Portland on this Saturday night. I'm Art Edwards here with meteorologist Joe Ranieri. Joe, how are things going out there now? Things are pretty quiet, and that's what's going to happen heading into the overnight hours, Art. And the one thing you'll be running into, though, is some very low clouds heading into the after, really, after midnight and into a good part of tomorrow morning. Some locations won't really be able to shake off the uh, foggy conditions a good part of the morning and the early part of the afternoon heading into tomorrow. But as we look at the visibility map right now, it's pretty good throughout parts of the Portland area, but you travel into the central and southern part of the Willamette Valley. Yeah, it's down to less than a mile. We're of course, we're talking near uh, Lynn County over in the Eugene area. So if you're going to be traveling out here the next couple of hours and into tomorrow morning, you're going to want to give yourself a little bit of extra space. And we're done with the precipitation. We saw light amounts earlier today. We saw about a tenth of an inch of rain uh, here in uh, downtown Portland. And a little bit of some snow showers up in the Oregon Cascades, but unfortunately we didn't see much in terms of accumulation, and that is going to remain the same here over the next couple of days. So let's queue up the future cast. We'll bring in uh, where those glow clouds will be basically tomorrow morning. They're just going to be sitting up and down the I-5 corridor. And like I said, a few locations around the city might not see much in terms of uh, sunshine heading into tomorrow. But you travel into the later part of the afternoon, you'll start to see a little bit of some clearing throughout uh, southwest Washington and just north of the Portland area. You could be seeing a little bit of some uh, sunshine here and there. Maybe just throughout parts of some of the suburbs, you'll be seeing a little bit of some uh, a mix of clouds and sunshine as we head into the last day of the year and December rainfall. Yeah, pretty impressive, not record breaking. Right now we're sitting about just over eight and a half inches of rain. Still a, a hefty amount for the month of December when you uh, notice that we keep, you know, for average, it's just over oh, just under six inches of rain. Coming up in my detailed forecast art, I'll talk more about what we can expect to see heading into tomorrow and of course New Year's Day as well. All right, thank you, Joe. Look forward to it. New at 11 take a look at some video, new video that was sent from the Coast Guard of a rescue near the southern Oregon coast. Rescuers posted this video on social media showing crews rescuing three children and their father in the pitch black on Wednesday night. This happened in a remote forest south of Charleston, Oregon. Coast Guard said that the kid's father called 911 to say that they were lost. Crews were able to get them out of the area by about 8 o'clock that night and then on to a hospital. No word on their conditions. And new tonight, new one person was heard after they were stabbed in Northeast Portland. This happened about 930 tonight along MLK Junior Boulevard and Killingsworth Street. Portland police say that the man was hurt and has serious injuries, was taken to the hospital. PPB says that they were able to arrest a suspect. Right now, Killingsworth is closed between MLK and Garfield. We'll update you with more information when it does become available. And Portland police made even more progress with a stolen vehicle operation they had going. On Thursday, officers were able to recover nine stolen vehicles and take nine people into custody during 20 traffic stops in East Portland. This was all part of the Portland Police Bureau's effort to use data science to hone in on vehicles that are likely stolen. According to PPB, there has been a 25% reduction in stolen vehicles reported to the Bureau this year compared to last year. Now to an update on a plane crash that killed three people in Polk County. A preliminary report from the investigation says the pilot ignored instructors advice before the crash. That's according to the National Transportation Safety Board. The NTSB also said that they could not find any indication of mechanical malfunctions or failures. As we, report, we reported, the single engine plane traveling from McMinnville to Independence crashed in heavy fog on December the 16th. The owner of the plane was not on board when it crashed and it brought down power lines, sparked a small brush fire and knocked out power to nearly 400 homes. Those killed were identified as three pilots who were Afghan Air Force officers who served with the U.S. military until the Taliban took over Afghanistan in 2021. As refugees, the U.S. granted them asylum for their work. A ban on flavored tobacco products it was set to go into effect on Monday, the first day of the new year. But earlier this week, the Oregon Court of Appeals pressed pause. Smoke shops say that they don't know how long that pause is going to last. Ashley Grams has the details. Smokers are us. Smokers are us is a family owned smoke shop in northwest Portland. Up until a few days ago, employees and customers alike were preparing for a countywide ban on flavored tobacco. 
Jacob Fisher is a shop manager. It was a huge worry for me. I had no idea where I was going to go, what I was going to do. Multnomah County Commissioners approved the ban back in 2022, and it was set to take effect January 1st of 2024. But the Oregon Court of Appeals approved a stay, allowing shops like this one to keep selling while litigation continues. I'm sure we would find something to pivot to, but we would lose uh, such a tremendous amount of money. While the shop does sell other products, they say it's unlikely they'd be able to stay in business if the ban went into effect because the majority of their sales are flavored tobacco. At current, this is about 85 to 90 percent of our business. While vape and smoke shops across the county fight for their livelihood, others are in favor of the ban. Each day of delay leads to more kids being hooked on nicotine. Michael Cox represents Flavors Hook Organ Kids, a group of more than 50 organizations from across the state working to enact a ban on flavored tobacco. We feel that tobacco products flavored like cotton candy shouldn't be sold here in the state of Oregon, that it's too easy for kids under 18 to get their hands on a product. But Fisher doesn't agree. I think that is an incredibly unfair argument. Uh, speaking as someone who grew up smoking cigarettes, right? Um, I think, unfortunately, kids are always going to be interested in things that are bad, right? Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, etc. Lawsuits continue to rain down on Pacific Corp related to their alleged negligence during the 2020 Labor Day wildfires. Our Sydney Dorner spoke with a vineyard owner who says the company could have prevented some of the damage. Three Willamette Valley courts ruled Wednesday that several wineries across the valley can move forward with their lawsuits against Pacific Corp. They're claiming the utility company was negligent during the 2020 Labor Day wildfires, ruining their crops with smoke. Jim Bernal, owner of Willamette Valley Vineyards, says the fruit was just starting to ripen for the harvest when the wildfires burned through the Cascades on Labor Day 2020. A fairly small fire grew into a conflagration and, and in large part because of the winds were so powerful that the transmission lines that were left on during those really high winds sparked additional fires, something like 12 to 13 or 14 additional fires. And it turned a small fire, a manageable fire, into a fire that was impossible to contain. He says that smoke then blew down into the Willamette Valley, ruining the crops they were working so hard on. Some of the grapes, of course, took on that smoke uh, as they were developing, and so that made the fruit unusable. We had to basically declassify that fruit, and instead of using it to make our delicious red Pinot Noirs, we had to make rosés. This resulted in a number of Oregon wineries and vineyards being severely financially impacted. We couldn't harvest the fruit, and so that meant you spent all year looking after the fruit, uh, putting all your effort into growing the fruit, and then you didn't have a crop. Now Bruneau, alongside two other wineries, are continuing with their lawsuits against Pacific Corp, hoping to regain the money they lost. Some of our colleagues were decimated. They lost their entire crop, or in some cases, they were only able to make half of their production volume which made it impossible for them to be financially sustainable. Pacific Corp responded to the lawsuit, saying the winery smoke damage claims are baseless and threatening their ability to provide essential services through spurious lawsuits like these and excessive wildfire damages pursued by out-of-state plaintiff attorneys who have a substantial financial stake in these outcomes. Pacific Corp told us they have settled and will continue to settle all reasonable claims. Bruno says the company is working with victims of these fires to figure out how to make them financially whole. He's optimistic that his industry will get the financial recovery they are seeking. And so part of what we're doing, of course, is making sure that we protect the reputation of the Oregon wine industry. We want to make sure this never happens again. Bruno says to prevent another disaster like this, it's vital the state makes sure utility companies have the resources to maintain transmission lines and protect them from severe weather conditions. The second thing we've got to do is make sure that our utilities, their customers and the communities are prepared to turn off those transmission lines. Lawyers representing Willamette Valley Vineyards are holding town hall meetings in January and February to let other wineries know how to submit claims for recovery. Sydney Dorner, KGW News.